Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Whitworth Jazz Ensemble's Hub Concert. We're glad to see you all here. I know this event is being streamed online. Thank you to everybody tuning in uh, on the internet and listening to us. We've got a great program for you. I am Christopher Parkin. I'm the director of the Jazz 2 here at Whitworth. And later on, uh, as indicated in the program and online, Dr. Jared Hall will be leading the way with Jazz 1 here in about half hour or so. So we're going to get things started. This is a composition by the late, great Wayne Shorter, who just passed away. Uh, we lost him just a few months ago, earlier this semester. And this has been a feature project for us. You're going to hear from several different soloists in the band, and um, I'll name names specifically later. This concert, historically, is a big night and a big opportunity to showcase our seniors that will be departing us soon and graduating. And so I'll talk about that in a minute. But for now, to get things going, hope you enjoy Footprints on Wayne Shorter. Thank you. 
So, as stated, uh, this concert historically has been an opportunity to showcase seniors that have been in the bands and are moving on from Whitworth. It's funny how it works. The freshmen become seniors and then they leave us so. But uh, we have three of them in our band here today, this year. And we're gonna play these, uh, the next two selections are gonna feature uh, one each. We're gonna start with Brendan Archer. Brendan is a music major and is going to be hanging around doing the MBA program here. Yeah. And he has, yeah, been a valued contributor to our department, specifically to this band. I've had the pleasure of having him in combos and just chatting with him about life and experience, so, and some good times down south. Now we have that mutual connection of living in the deep south for at least a little bit. So anyway, this is a great drum feature, classic little tune. It's entitled Q, and it's featuring Brendan Archer. <laughs> Now we're going to rotate around the rhythm section a little bit. I'm going to talk about Samson Irish Lodge. <laughs> Samson, yeah, yeah. So I got to know Samson this year. Um, also played one of my jazz combos, playing in a jazz band. He is departing to the west side, going to be attending graduate school at Seattle Pacific University, yep, psychology major, and he's going to be continuing studies over there. And we are going to play Fittingly, a classic Duke Ellington composition. This was actually originally a vocal tune that we've adapted for piano, because how, how often does the piano really get featured or get melody in the jazz band, right? It's usually like one of the most covered up things. And so we are gonna feature him on this tune. Gets to play a little bit of some melody lines, some nice tasty little fills here and there. And yeah, it's just a great little swing tune. It's entitled Don't Get Around Much Anymore, featuring Samson Irish Lodge. Thank you. 
for something very different. So a little backstory on this. So as, as you can see, we're not quite the full size jazz ensemble maybe you would expect to find. And this is actually a configuration that is, I would even argue, maybe a little more popular than a lot of today's music and industry shows where you don't just have a lot of players. Like this is called the Little Big Band. And so just kind of having that on my radar and operating, you know, coming to the decision, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna do Little Big Band this year. And I was sitting around during jam term and I thought, you know, our instrumentation is kind of unique in that I knew that Jace, our trumpeter, also plays horn. And then I got to thinking, well, we have the two saxophones, Barry and Alto, that's kind of interesting. And then I thought, you know, I have my bass player in my combo, I know actually plays tuba a little bit too. So I, my, the, the wheels were turning in my head and I realized, hey, I wonder if we could pull off some Birth of the Cool, if anybody's familiar with that great Miles Davis album. Very unique album, very different. Uh, a set apart item in jazz history. It's kind of known as third stream, where it's fusing together elements of classical music, a little bit of jazz too, obviously, but not quite one way or the other. Uh, it kind of resulted in this unique sound. So a lot of great players, uh, famous musicians. Gunther Schuller was actually a French horn player on that album. A lot of great New York players. Um, so yeah, and of course, Miles Davis on trumpet is um, leading the way. So we're inviting our guests, like I just mentioned, this is Saul Cuddy. Gonna Gonna sit in and play some tuba for us, and um, yeah, a couple notes. Like I said, Joey's playing the role of Miles Davis. You'll hear him on a lot of the lead. Uh, Jay's playing horn, and then we've got to talk about our third senior here. This is Rowan Horner. Rowan has been in the band a couple years. Been taking lessons with me um, about the same amount of time, maybe two years, three years, somewhere in there. Anyway. He is going to be graduating with a gr degree in graphic design and attending a, uh, you're studying abroad in Denmark, yes. right? For about six months or so. Little work, little business, little pleasure, I'm sure all wrapped into that. So that's very exciting. And uh, yeah, we thank him for his contributions. You'll hear a little, um, he's, he's playing the role, if you will, of Jerry Mulligan, a little short solo on this one too. So if you're not familiar with Birth of the Cool, you should definitely check it out and hopefully enjoy our version of a ballad from that album entitled Moon Dream.
are set now and close the year for Jazz 2. This is an arrangement I did of Night in Tunisia. It's by the great Dizzy Gillespie, trumpeter, bebop extraordinaire. And again, be sure to stick around. Uh, we'll have a short little break uh, just to switch staging and get Jazz 1 up here. So yeah, definitely stick around for that. But we're going to just go out with a bang here and feature. We're going to hear a little bit from our seniors again, Roland on Barry. Uh, hear a little bit of Samson and Brendan doing some really fun polyrhythmic metric modulating uh, cool stuff, aka cool stuff on the drums. So this is Night in Tunisia. We are the Whitworth Jazz Ensemble 2. Thank you all very much.
Thank you so very much. Welcome to the Hub at Whitworth University. We're so glad you could join us for this community concert. We've done a lot this year, and like Chris said, it's kind of a celebration for us in the band and our very few seniors in this group. That was the classic, classic Frank Foster composition, Blues and Hosses Flat, and that featured Julia Maher at the trumpet. It also featured Nolan Cartham at the drums. And how about an, for another big round of applause for Chris Parkin and the Jazz Two Ensemble? Didn't they do just a great job? Yeah. All right, we're going to play another composition. And this composition I arranged for the band, and it's kind of a an interesting combination of arrangers and composers. There's this great composition called Perdido that was covered by the Duke Ellington Orchestra and it was written by his trombonist, Juan Tizal. It's a very famous composition and it featured Clark Terry on the trumpet on these long trumpet solos. And I found this uh, recording of Clark Terry and uh, uh, Jimmy Hamilton on clar clarinet playing this line and it's actually attributed to Clark Terry writing this line as a composition. And uh, it's not super well known, so I decided to do arrangement and kind of feature our band on this. And we're gonna hear from a number of outstanding soloists. We're gonna hear from Brendan Archer, our big senior on the vibraphone. We're gonna hear from Tyler Van Gordon on the guitar. And also, we've been fortunate to have uh, a guest this year, uh, a senior at Mead High School, but will become a freshman next year here at Whitworth. We're so glad to have him coming in. Will Strout on the trombone. <laughs> this is what I call, uh, what do I call this actually? <laughs> Clark's Perdido Mine.
How about it for Jacob Simonson on the drums? Yeah. We're very fortunate to have a lot of talented drummers in this band and a lot of wonderful students. And we've got some incredible students coming in next year, which we're really excited. We had a wonderful turnout for auditions, some folks coming in from Mead High School. And so we're excited um, for next year. But we've done a lot this year, I would say. Um, some highlights, I just want to share some highlights with you. Uh, beginning of the fall, I, I stepped into this new position as the director of jazz studies, and we had, I think, two concerts on the calendar. We had a huge one with Tierney Sutton, uh, a wonderful vocalist, and we were able to cap collaborate with uh, Phil Baldwin and Brent Edstrom, who did the arrangements for that concert, which was really wonderful. We also, I think our first concert was, was at Deer Park High School. We went up there, and, uh, and that was great. And uh, we also, uh, collaborated with Ferris High School, which they have an outstanding program here in Spokane. Uh, most recently, we did a concert with uh, Grammy Award-winning trumpet player and composer Brian Lynch at the Bing Crosby Theater downtown. That was sure a highlight where the, the band really played their tail off. A lot of hard music that Brian arranged um, um, and has played with some outstanding professional musicians. And see, am I forgetting any of the other concerts besides this one? This is a great one, too. Um, I also have to say our Jazz Combo um, has done some wonderful events here in the local area and the community. Uh, like a, a lot of our small groups have played here on campus or in the community and most recently they played at uh, the first Leavenworth Jazz Festival where they were able to take up some edu uh, educational opportunities and perform there. So I'm really proud of what this group has accomplished this year. It's really been pretty tremendous and I'm just excited for what's to come moving forward. So, speaking of that Brian Lynch concert, we played one of his arrangements, and we're gonna play one of those arrangements now of Blue Moon. This is gonna feature Melissa Jones on the baritone saxophone. And we're also, again, one, once again, I'm gonna hear from Brendan Archer on the vibraphone. This is Blue Moon. Thank you. 
Thank you so very much. I forgot to mention, we also had a piano solo on there. Silas Farley on the piano. <laughs> so we're, we're gonna do a tune that we also did on the Brian Lynch concert. And we picked this tune because Brian Lynch had played with the great Boris Silver. But also this tune features we only have a few seniors in the band. This is a young band. I'm very fortunate to have a young band because I get to work with them even longer. But uh, this next individual has been really critical to our program and has been a really important leader in our jazz ensemble. And it's been fun to work with him and give him opportunities to play. We, uh, he helped me start a jam session downtown at a place called Emma Roos where we've been hosting that once a month. Uh, ever since I moved into town. And I've known him for about a year now because I met him when I first uh, did the interview here at Whitworth University. He's a very special young man. And he's gonna be pursuing his master's degree at the University of Northern Colorado, which is pretty incredible. How about it for Anthony Monaguera, the drummer? <laughs> I'm sure gonna miss him, but we'll do some more playing before he takes off for Colorado, so. All right, we're gonna continue. This is Nutville. It's a little nutty, by the way.
Reverend Josh Weigelt on the trumpet. Ricky Gagliardi on the tenor saxophone. You also heard a little bit from Caden Harrison on the trombone. And give it up for Anthony Cowell on lead trumpet on that. I just want to take a moment and recognize our outstanding jazz faculty. It wouldn't be without their instruction and their classes and their, and their, their mentorship to help create a band like this and, and help foster um, their talent, but also provide areas of growth and, and areas that need to be improved. So that includes Christopher Parkin on the saxophone. Give it up for Christopher Parkin, who's our saxophone instructor. Also, Brent Edstrom, who's our piano instructor, jazz piano and theory and aural skills. And incredible drum instructor, Rick Westrick. Right here. Also, Tom Shook, who gives private instruction in jazz and many other areas here at Whitworth. Tom Shook. One other I'd like to recognize who unfortunately is going to be retiring from Whitworth, um, who's an incredible um, bass player and educator in the area, a top call musician. How about it for Eugene Jablonski? We're going to miss him here at Whitworth. All right, we're going to slow things down here for a minute. We're going to feature uh, Josh on a wonderful flugelhorn solo. And an incredible arranger and composer is that of Thad Jones. This is A Child Is Born.
everybody for Josh, Josh Weigelt. Flugelhorn. All right, there's so many incredible musicians in this band, I want to acknowledge them all. We had another wonderful guest from Mount Spokane High School. He's a senior, and although he's not going to be attending Whitworth, he's going to be in good hands going down to the University of Arizona, right? How about it for Johnny Melinda on the alto saxophone? Johnny Melinda. Thank you, Johnny. We have our lead alto saxophonist, Max Cannon on the alto. Another wonderful musician, just a freshman, finishing his freshman year this year from Mount Spokane High School, Will Peterson on the tenor saxophone. We had another incredible guest with us this year, which was really important since there's a little bit of a trombone drought in the area. Uh, on the bass trombone, from, also from Mount Spokane High School, uh, Dakota Shaw. It's been wonderful to work with her in private lessons and jazz lessons. She's always has a smile on her face. I don't get it, you know, I, despite how busy Whitworth and, and how things can get so crazy with the schedule. How about it for McKenna Falkenstein Bar Barker on the trombone? We also have uh, our, our lead trumpet player uh, just finishing her freshman year here at Whitworth and is playing in all sorts of ensembles and is, I think is really loving Whitworth, I hope. Julia Maher on the trumpet. <laughs> How about it for Ellie Brueggemeyer on the trumpet? And also Mia Stone on the trumpet. All right, all right, did I cover? I think I got everybody at some point this evening, so. We're so glad you could be with us this afternoon. Thanks for joining us. Um, this is wonderful to be a part of this community. Brendan, you're smiling. Did I miss something? I missed Isaac. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was saying how it's like, if we're missing the bass player, it's like trying to drive a car with three wheels earlier this afternoon. We couldn't do it without him. Isaac Massey on the upright bass. <laughs> Got it. I gotta get him to play some bass solos next year. What do you say? All right, well thank you for being here this afternoon. This is such a, an incredible community to be a part of. Thanks for joining us. We are gonna close with an arrangement that was done by a friend of mine who lives in the west, um, on the west side of the state in Edmonds, Washington, where he's a, he's a band director, but also a really incredible trombone player who attended the University of North Texas for his master's degree. His name is Connor Eisenminger, and we hope to do justice on his arrangement uh, these are the soulful days. We hope this makes you feel good uh, getting out of here to enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you.
כדאי.